Washington, D.C., formerly the District of Columbia, also known as just Washington or just D.C., is the capital city and only federal district of the United States. It is located on the east bank of the Potomac River, which forms its southwestern and southern border with the U.S. state of Virginia, and shares a land border with the U.S. state of Maryland on its remaining sides. The city was named for George Washington, a founding father and the first president of the United States, and the federal district is named after Columbia, a female personification of the nation. As the seat of the U.S. federal government and several international organizations, the city is an important world political capital. It is one of the most visited cities in the U.S., seeing over 20 million visitors in 2016. The U.S. Constitution provides for a federal district under the exclusive jurisdiction of Congress, the district is therefore not a part of any U.S. state. The signing of the Residence Act on July 16, 1790, approved the creation of a capital district located along the Potomac River near the country's east coast. The city of Washington was founded in 1791 to serve as the national capital, and Congress held its first session there in 1800. In 1801, the territory, formerly part of Maryland and Virginia, officially became recognized as the federal district. In 1846, Congress returned the land originally ceded by Virginia, including the city of Alexandria. In 1871, it created a single municipal government for the remaining portion of the district. There have been efforts to make the city into a state since the 1880s, a movement that has gained momentum in recent years, and a statehood bill passed the House of Representatives in 2021. The city is divided into quadrants centered on the Capitol building, and there are as many as 131 neighborhoods. According to the 2020 census, it has a population of 689,545, which makes it the 20th most populous city in the U.S. and gives it a population larger than that of two U.S. states, Wyoming and Vermont. Commuters from the surrounding Maryland and Virginia suburbs raise the city's daytime population to more than one million during the work week. The Washington metropolitan area, the country's sixth largest, also includes parts of Maryland, Virginia, and West Virginia, and had a 2019 estimated population of 6.3 million residents. The three branches of the U.S. federal government are centered in the district, Congress, the President, and the Supreme Court. Washington is home to many national monuments and museums, primarily situated on or around the National Mall. The city hosts 177 foreign embassies as well as the headquarters of many international organizations, trade unions, non-profits, lobbying groups, and professional associations, including the World Bank Group, the International Monetary Fund, the Organization of American States, the ARP, the National Geographic Society, the Human Rights Campaign, the International Finance Corporation, and the American Red Cross. A locally elected mayor and a 13-member council have governed the district since 1973. Congress maintains supreme authority over the city and may overturn local laws. D.C. residents elect a non-voting, at-large congressional delegate to the House of Representatives, but the district has no representation in the Senate. District voters choose three presidential electors in accordance with the 23rd Amendment to the United States Constitution, ratified in 1961. Chapter 1 – History Various tribes of the Algonquian-speaking Piscataway people inhabited the lands around the Potomac River when Europeans first visited the area in the early 17th century. One group known as the Nacochtank maintained settlements around the Anacostia River, within the present-day District of Columbia. Conflicts with European colonists and neighboring tribes forced the relocation of the Piscataway people, some of whom established a new settlement in 1699 near Point of Rocks, Maryland. On October 6, forced by the Pennsylvania Mutiny of 1783 to Princeton, New Jersey, Congress resolved itself into a committee of the whole, to take into consideration, respecting a place for the permanent residence of Congress. The following day, Elbridge Gerry of Massachusetts moved that buildings for the use of Congress be erected on the banks of the Delaware near Trenton, or of the Potomac, near Georgetown, 
provided a suitable district can be procured on one of the rivers as aforesaid, for a federal town. In his Federalist No. 43, published January 23, 1788, James Madison argued that the new federal government would need authority over a national capital to provide for its own maintenance and safety. The Pennsylvania Mutiny of 1783, emphasized the need for the national government not to rely on any state for its own security. Article 1, Section 8, of the Constitution permits the establishment of a district as may, by session of particular states, and the acceptance of Congress, become the seat of the government of the United States. However, the Constitution does not specify a location for the capital. In what is now known as the Compromise of 1790, Madison, Alexander Hamilton, and Thomas Jefferson agreed that the federal government would pay each state's remaining Revolutionary War debts in exchange for establishing the new national capital, in the southern United States. Chapter 1 Section 1, Foundation On July 9, 1790, Congress passed the Residence Act, which approved the creation of a national capital on the Potomac River. The exact location was to be selected by President George Washington, who signed the bill into law on July 16. Formed from land donated by the states of Maryland and Virginia, the initial shape of the federal district was a square measuring 10 miles on each side, totaling 100 square miles. Two pre-existing settlements were included in the territory, the Port of Georgetown, Maryland, founded in 1751, and the Port City of Alexandria, Virginia, founded in 1749. During 1791-92, a team under Andrew Ellicott, including Ellicott's brothers Joseph and Benjamin and African-American astronomer Benjamin Banneker, surveyed the borders of the federal district and placed boundary stones at every mile point. Many of the stones are still standing. A new federal city was then constructed on the north bank of the Potomac, to the east of Georgetown. On September 9, 1791, the three commissioners overseeing the capital's construction named the city in honor of President Washington. The same day, the federal district was named Columbia, which was a poetic name for the United States commonly in use at that time. Congress held its first session there on November 17, 1800. Congress passed the District of Columbia Organic Act of 1801 which officially organized the district and placed the entire territory under the exclusive control of the federal government. Further, the area within the district was organized into two counties, the County of Washington to the east of the Potomac and the County of Alexandria to the west. After the passage of this act, Citizens living in the district were no longer considered residents of Maryland or Virginia, which therefore ended their representation in Congress. Chapter 1 Section 2, Burning During the War of 1812 On August 24 to 25, 1814, in a raid known as the Burning of Washington, British forces invaded the capital during the War of 1812. The capital, Treasury, and White House were burned and gutted during the attack. Most government buildings were repaired quickly, however, the Capitol was largely under construction at the time and, and was not completed in its current form until 1868. Chapter 1 Section 3, Retrocession and the Civil War In the 1830s, the district's southern territory of Alexandria went into economic decline partly due to neglect by Congress. The city of Alexandria, was a major market in the American slave trade, and pro-slavery residents feared that abolitionists in Congress would end slavery in the district, further depressing the economy. Alexandria's citizens petitioned Virginia to take back the land it had donated to form the district, through a process known as retrocession. The Virginia General Assembly voted in February 1846 to accept the return of Alexandria. On July 9, 1846, Congress agreed to return all the territory that Virginia had ceded. Therefore, the district's area consists only of the portion originally donated by Maryland. Confirming the fears of pro-slavery Alexandrians, the Compromise of 1850 outlawed the slave trade in the district, although not slavery itself. The outbreak of the American Civil War in 1861 led to the expansion of the federal government, and notable growth in the district's population, 
including a large influx of freed slaves. President Abraham Lincoln signed the Compensated Emancipation Act in 1862, which ended slavery in the District of Columbia, and freed about 3,100 enslaved persons, nine months prior to the Emancipation Proclamation. In 1868, Congress granted the district's African-American male residents the right to vote in municipal elections. Chapter 1 Section 4, Growth and Redevelopment By 1870, the district's population had grown 75% from the previous census to nearly 132,000 residents. Despite the city's growth, Washington still had dirt roads and lacked basic sanitation. Some members of Congress suggested moving the capital further west, but President Ulysses S. Grant refused to consider such a proposal. Congress passed the Organic Act of 1871, which repealed the individual charters of the cities of Washington and Georgetown, abolished Washington County, and created a new territorial government for the whole District of Columbia. After the reorganization, President Grant appointed Alexander Roby Shepard to the position of Governor of the District of Columbia in 1873. Shepard authorized large scale projects that greatly modernized the city of Washington, but ultimately bankrupted the district government. In 1874, Congress replaced the territorial government with an appointed three-member board of commissioners. The city's first motorized streetcars began service in 1888. They generated growth in areas of the district beyond the city of Washington's original boundaries. Washington's urban plan was expanded throughout the district in the following decades. Georgetown's street grid and other administrative details were formally merged to those of the legal city of Washington in 1895. However, the city had poor housing conditions and strained public works. The district was the first city in the nation to undergo urban renewal projects as part of the City Beautiful movement in the early 1900s. Increased federal spending as a result of the New Deal in the 1930s led to the construction of new government buildings, memorials, and museums in the district, though the chairman of the House Subcommittee on District Appropriations Ross A. Collins from Mississippi justified cuts to funds for welfare and education for local residents saying that my constituents wouldn't stand for spending money on niggers. World War II further increased government activity, adding to the number of federal employees in the capital. By 1950, the district's population reached its peak of 802,178 residents. Chapter 1 Section 5, Civil Rights and Home Rule Era the 23rd Amendment to the United States Constitution was ratified in 1961, granting the district three votes in the Electoral College for the election of president and vice president, but still no voting representation in Congress. After the assassination of civil rights leader Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., on April 4, 1968, riots broke out in the district, primarily in the U Street, 14th Street, 7th Street, and H Street corridors centers of black residential and commercial areas. The riots raged for three days until more than 13,600 federal troops and D.C. Army National Guardsmen stopped the violence. Many stores and other buildings were burned, rebuilding was not completed until the late 1990s. In 1973, Congress enacted the District of Columbia Home Rule Act, providing for an elected mayor and 13-member council for the district. In 1975, Walter Washington became the first elected and first black mayor of the district. Chapter 2, Geography Washington, D.C., is located in the mid-Atlantic region of the U.S. East Coast. Due to the District of Columbia retrocession, the city has a total area of 68.34 square miles, of which 61.05 square miles is land and 7.29 square miles is water. The district is bordered by Montgomery County, Maryland to the northwest, Prince George's County, Maryland to the east, Arlington County, Virginia to the west, and Alexandria, Virginia to the south. Washington, D.C., is 38 miles from Baltimore, 124 miles from Philadelphia, and 227 miles from New York City. The south bank of the Potomac River forms the district's border with Virginia, 
and has two major tributaries, the Anacostia River and Rock Creek. Tiber Creek, a natural watercourse that once passed through the National Mall, was fully enclosed underground during the 1870s. The creek also formed a portion of the now-filled Washington City Canal, which allowed passage through the city to the Anacostia River from 1815 until the 1850s. The Chesapeake and Ohio Canal starts in Georgetown, and was used during the 19th century to bypass the Little Falls of the Potomac River, located at the northwest edge of Washington at the Atlantic Seaboard Fall Line. The highest natural elevation in the district is 409 feet above sea level at Fort Reno Park in Upper Northwest Washington. The lowest point is sea level at the Potomac River. The geographic center of Washington is near the intersection of 4th and L Streets NW. The district has 7,464 acres of parkland, about 19% of the city's total area, and the second highest percentage among high-density U.S. cities. This factor contributed to Washington, D.C., being ranked as third in the nation for park access and quality in the 2018 Park Score ranking of the park systems of the 100 most populous cities in the United States according to the non-profit Trust for Public Land. The National Park Service manages most of the 9,122 acres of city land owned by the U.S. government. Rock Creek Park is a 1,754-acre urban forest in northwest Washington, which extends 9.3 miles through a stream valley that bisects the city. Established in 1890, it is the country's fourth oldest national park and is home to a variety of plant and animal species, including raccoon, deer, owls, and coyotes. Other National Park Service properties include the C and O Canal National Historical Park, the National Mall and Memorial Parks, Theodore Roosevelt Island, Columbia Island, Fort DuPont Park, Meridian Hill Park, Kenilworth Park, and Aquatic Gardens, and Anacostia Park. The D.C. Department of Parks and Recreation maintains the city's 900 acres of athletic fields and playgrounds, 40 swimming pools, and 68 recreation centers. The U.S. Department of Agriculture operates the 446-acre U.S. National Arboretum in Northeast Washington. Chapter 2 Section 1 Climate Washington is in the humid subtropical climate zone. The Troatha classification is defined as an oceanic climate. Winters are usually cool with light snow, and summers are hot and humid. The district is in plant hardiness zone 8A near downtown, and zone 7B elsewhere in the city, indicating a humid subtropical climate. Spring and fall are mild to warm, while winter is cool with annual snowfall averaging 15.5 inches. Winter temperatures average around 38 degrees Fahrenheit from mid-December to mid-February. However, winter temperatures in excess of 60 degrees Fahrenheit are not uncommon. Summers are hot and humid with a July daily average of 79.8 degrees Fahrenheit, and average daily relative humidity around 66%, which can cause moderate personal discomfort. Heat indices regularly approach 100 degrees Fahrenheit at the height of summer. The combination of heat and humidity in the summer brings very frequent thunderstorms, some of which occasionally produce tornadoes in the area. Blizzards affect Washington, on average, once every four to six years. The most violent storms are called nor'easters, which often affect large sections of the East Coast. From January 27 to 28, 1922, the city officially received 28 inches of snowfall the largest snowstorm since official measurements began in 1885. According to notes kept at the time, the city received between 30 and 36 inches from a snowstorm in January 1772. Hurricanes occasionally track through the area in late summer and early fall. However, they are often weak by the time they reach Washington, partly due to the city's inland location. Flooding of the Potomac River, however, caused by a combination of high tide, storm surge, and runoff, has been known to cause extensive property damage in the neighborhood of Georgetown. Precipitation occurs throughout the year. The highest recorded temperature was 106 degrees Fahrenheit on August 6, 1918, and on July 20, 1930. 
while the lowest recorded temperature was minus 15 degrees Fahrenheit on February 11, 1899, right before the Great Blizzard of 1899. During a typical year, the city averages about 37 days at or above 90 degrees Fahrenheit and 64 nights at or below the freezing mark. On average, the first day with a minimum at or below freezing is November 18 and the last day is March 27. Chapter 3, Cityscape Washington, D.C., is a planned city. In 1791, President Washington commissioned Pierre Charles L'Enfant, a French-born architect and city planner, to design the new capital. He enlisted Scottish surveyor Alexander Ralston to help lay out the city plan. The L'Enfant plan featured broad streets and avenues radiating out from rectangles, providing room for open space and landscaping. He based his design on plans of cities such as Paris, Amsterdam, Karlsruhe, and Milan that Thomas Jefferson had sent to him. L'Enfant's design also envisioned a garden-lined Grand Avenue approximately one mile in length and 400 feet wide in the area that is now the National Mall. President Washington dismissed L'Enfant in March 1792 due to conflicts with the three commissioners appointed to supervise the capital's construction. Andrew Ellicott, who had worked with L'Enfant surveying the city, was then tasked with completing the design. Though Ellicott made revisions to the original plans, including changes to some street patterns, L'Enfant is still credited with the overall design of the city. By the early 20th century, L'Enfant's vision of a grand national capital had become marred by slums and randomly placed buildings, including a railroad station on the National Mall. Congress formed a special committee charged with beautifying Washington's ceremonial core. What became known as the Macmillan Plan was finalized in 1901 and included re-landscaping the Capitol grounds and the National Mall, clearing slums, and establishing a new citywide park system. The plan is thought to have largely preserved L'Enfant's intended design. By law, Washington's skyline is low and sprawling. The Federal Height of Buildings Act of 1910 allows buildings that are no taller than the width of the adjacent street, plus 20 feet. Despite popular belief, no law has ever limited buildings to the height of the United States Capitol Building or the 555-foot Washington Monument, which remains the district's tallest structure. City leaders have criticized the height restriction as a primary reason why the district has limited affordable housing and traffic problems caused by suburban sprawl. The district is divided into four quadrants of unequal area northwest, northeast, southeast, and southwest. The axes bounding the quadrants radiate from the U.S. Capitol Building. All road names include the quadrant abbreviation to indicate their location and house numbers generally correspond with the number of blocks away from the capital. Most streets are set out in a grid pattern with east-west streets named with letters, north-south streets with numbers, and diagonal avenues, many of which are named after states. The city of Washington was bordered by Boundary Street to the north, Rock Creek to the west, and the Anacostia River to the east. Washington's street grid was extended, where possible, throughout the district starting in 1888. Georgetown's streets were renamed in 1895. Some streets are particularly noteworthy, such as Pennsylvania Avenue, which connects the White House to the Capitol, and K Street, which houses the offices of many lobbying groups. Constitution Avenue and Independence Avenue, located on the north and south sides of the National Mall, respectively, are home to many of Washington's iconic museums, including the Smithsonian Institution Buildings, the National Archives Building. Washington hosts 177 foreign embassies, constituting approximately 297 buildings beyond the more than 1,600 residential properties owned by foreign countries, many of which are on a section of Massachusetts Avenue informally known as Embassy Row. Chapter 3 Section 1 architecture. The architecture of Washington varies greatly. Six of the top ten buildings in the American Institute of Architects 2007 ranking of America's favorite architecture are in the District of Columbia, the White House, the Washington National Cathedral, the Thomas Jefferson Memorial, 
the United States Capitol, the Lincoln Memorial, and the Vietnam Veterans Memorial. The neoclassical, Georgian, Gothic, and modern architectural styles are all reflected among those six structures and many other prominent edifices in Washington. Many of the government buildings, monuments, and museums along the National Mall and surrounding areas are heavily inspired by classical Roman and Greek architecture. For examples, the designs of the White House, Capitol, Supreme Court Building, Washington Monument, National Gallery of Art, Lincoln Memorial, and Jefferson Memorial, are all heavily drawn from these classical architectural movements, consisting of large pediments, domes, columns in the classical order, and heavy walls made of stone. Notable exceptions to the city's classical style architecture include buildings constructed in the French Second Empire style such as the Eisenhower Executive Office Building. The Thomas Jefferson Building, which serves as the main building for the Library of Congress, is built in the style of Beaux-Arts architecture. Meridian Hill Park, contains a cascading waterfall with Italian Renaissance-style architecture. The Smithsonian Institution Building, often called the Castle, is built of Seneca red sandstone in the Norman Revival style. Modern and other non-classical architectural styles are also seen throughout the city. The National Museum of African American History and Culture deeply contrasts the stone-based neoclassical buildings on the Mall, as its design combines modern engineering with heavy inspiration from African art. Additionally, the interior of the Washington Metro stations are designed with strong influence from the 20th century art movement of brutalism, as is the Hirschhorn Museum and Sculpture Garden. Outside downtown Washington, architectural styles are even more varied. Historic buildings are designed primarily in the Queen Anne, Chateauesque, Richardsonian Romanesque, Georgian Revival, Beaux-Arts, and a variety of Victorian styles. Row houses are especially prominent in areas developed after the Civil War and typically follow Federalist and late Victorian designs. Georgetown's old stone house was built in 1765, making it the oldest standing original building in the city. Founded in 1789, Georgetown University features a mix of Romanesque and Gothic Revival architecture. The Ronald Reagan Building is the largest building in the district with a total area of approximately 3.1 million square feet. Chapter 4, Demographics The U.S. Census Bureau estimates that the district's population was 705,749 as of July 2019, an increase of more than 100,000 people compared to the 2010 United States Census. When measured on a decade-over-decade -decade basis, this continues a growth trend since 2000, following a half-century of population decline. But on a year-over-year -year basis, the July 2019 census count shows a population decline of 16,000 individuals over the preceding 12-month period. Washington was the 24th most populous place in the United States as of 2010. According to data from 2010, Commuters from the suburbs increase the district's daytime population to over a million. If the district were a state it would rank 49th in population, ahead of Vermont and Wyoming. The Washington metropolitan area, which includes the district and surrounding suburbs, is the sixth largest metropolitan area in the United States with an estimated 6 million residents in 2014. When the Washington area is included with Baltimore and its suburbs, the Baltimore-Washington metropolitan area had a population exceeding 9.8 million residents in 2020, the third largest combined statistical area in the country. According to 2017 Census Bureau data, the population of Washington, D.C., was 47.1% black or African American, 45.1% white, 4.3% Asian, 0.6% American Indian or Alaska Native, and 0.1% Native Hawaiian or other Pacific Islander. Individuals from two or more races made up 2.7% of the population. Hispanics of any race made up 11.0% of the district's population. Washington has had a significant African-American population since the city's foundation. 
African-American residents composed about 30% of the district's total population between 1800 and 1940. The black population reached a peak of 70% by 1970, but has since steadily declined due to many African Americans moving to the surrounding suburbs. Partly as a result of gentrification, there was a 31.4% increase in the non-Hispanic white population and an 11.5% decrease in the black population between 2000 and 2010. According to a study by the National Community Reinvestment Coalition DC, has experienced more intense gentrification than any other American city, with 40% of neighborhoods gentrified. About 17% of DC residents were age 18 or younger in 2010, lower than the US average of 24%. However, at 34 years old, the district had the lowest median age compared to the 50 states. As of 2010, there were an estimated 81,734 immigrants living in Washington, D.C. Major sources of immigration include El Salvador, Vietnam, and Ethiopia, with a concentration of Salvadorans in the Mount Pleasant neighborhood. Dot researchers found that there were 4,822 same sex couples in the District of Columbia in 2010, about 2% of total households. Legislation authorizing same-sex marriage passed in 2009, and the district began issuing marriage licenses to same-sex couples in March 2010. A 2007 report found that about a third of district residents were functionally illiterate, compared to a national rate of about one in five. This is attributed in part to immigrants, who are not proficient in English. As of 2011, 85% of DC residents age 5 and older spoke English at home as a primary language. Half of residents had at least a four-year college degree in 2006. In 2017, the median household income in DC was $77,649, also in 2017, DC residents had a personal income per capita of $50,832. However, 19% of residents were below the poverty level in 2005, higher than any state except Mississippi. In 2019, the poverty rate stood at 14.7%. Of the district's population, 17% is Baptist, 13% is Catholic, 6% is Evangelical Protestant, 4% is Methodist, 3% is Episcopalian Anglican, 3% is Jewish, 2% is Eastern Orthodox, 1% is Pentecostal, 1% is Buddhist, 1% is Adventist, 1% is Lutheran, 1% is Muslim, 1% is Presbyterian, 1% is Mormon, and 1% is Hindu. The city is populated with many religious buildings, including the Washington National Cathedral, the Basilica of the National Shrine of the Immaculate Conception, and the Islamic Center of Washington, which was the largest mosque in the Western Hemisphere when opened in 1957. As of 2010, more than 90% of DC residents had health insurance coverage, the second highest rate in the nation. This is due in part to city programs that help provide insurance to low-income individuals who do not qualify for other types of coverage. A 2009 report found that at least 3% of district residents have HIV or AIDS, which the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention characterizes as a generalized and severe epidemic. Chapter 4 Section 1 – Crime Crime in Washington, D.C., is concentrated in areas associated with poverty, drug abuse, and gangs. A 2010 study found that 5% of city blocks accounted for more than 25% of the district's total crimes. The more affluent neighborhoods of northwest Washington are typically safe, especially in areas with concentrations of government operations, such as downtown Washington, D.C., Foggy Bottom, Embassy Row, and Penn Quarter, but reports of violent crime increase in poorer neighborhoods generally concentrated in the eastern portion of the city. Approximately 60,000 residents are ex-convicts. In 2021, the annual murders continued on an upward trend, totaling 226, a significant rise from previous lows. In 2012, Washington's annual murder count had dropped to 88, the lowest total since 1961. 
Washington was once described as the murder capital of the United States during the early 1990s. The number of murders peaked in 1991 at 479, but the level of violence then began to decline significantly. In 2016, the district's Metropolitan Police Department tallied 135 homicides, a 53% increase from 2012 but a 17% decrease from 2015. Many neighborhoods such as Columbia Heights and Logan Circle are becoming safer and vibrant. However, incidents of robberies and thefts have remained higher in these areas because of increased nightlife activity and greater numbers of affluent residents. Even still, citywide reports of both property and violent crimes have declined by nearly half since their most recent highs in the mid-1990s. On June 26, 2008, the Supreme Court of the United States held in District of Columbia v. Heller that the city's 1976 handgun ban violated the right to keep and bear arms as protected under the Second Amendment. However, the ruling does not prohibit all forms of gun control, laws requiring firearm registration remain in place, as does the city's assault weapon ban. In addition to the district's own Metropolitan Police Department, many federal law enforcement agencies have jurisdiction in the city as well, most visibly the U.S. Park Police, founded in 1791. Chapter 5 Economy Washington has a growing, diversified economy with an increasing percentage of professional and business service jobs. The district's gross state product in 2018 Q2 was $141 billion. The Washington metropolitan area's gross product was $435 billion in 2014, making it the sixth-largest metropolitan economy in the United States. Between 2009 and 2016, GDP per capita in Washington has consistently ranked on the very top among U.S. states. In 2016, at $160,472, its GDP per capita is almost three times as high as that of Massachusetts, which was ranked second in the nation. As of 2011, the Washington metropolitan area had an unemployment rate of 6.2%, the second lowest rate among the 49 largest metro areas in the nation. The District of Columbia itself had an unemployment rate of 9.8% during the same time period. In 2019, D.C. had the highest median household income in the United States at $92,266. In December 2017, 25% of the employees in Washington, D.C., were employed by the federal government. This is thought to immunize Washington, D.C., to national economic downturns because the federal government continues operations even during recessions. Many organizations such as law firms, defense contractors, civilian contractors, non-profit organizations, lobbying firms, trade unions, industry trade groups, and professional associations have their headquarters in or near Washington, D.C., in order to be close to the federal government. The city of Roslyn, Virginia, located across the Potomac River from D.C., serves as a base of operations for several Fortune 500 companies, due to the building height restrictions in place within the District of Columbia. In 2018, Amazon announced they would build HQ2 in the Crystal City neighborhood of Arlington, Virginia. Tourism is Washington's second-largest industry. Approximately 18.9 million visitors contributed an estimated $4.8 billion to the local economy in 2012. The district also hosts nearly 200 foreign embassies and international organizations such as the World Bank, the International Monetary Fund, the Organization of American States, the Inter-American Development Bank, and the Pan-American Health Organization. In 2008, the Foreign Diplomatic Corps in Washington employed about 10,000 people and contributed an estimated $400 million annually to the local economy. The district has growing industries not directly related to government, especially in the areas of education, finance, public policy, and scientific research. Georgetown University, George Washington University, Washington Hospital Center, Children's National Medical Center and Howard University are the top five non-government-related employers in the city as of 2009. 
According to statistics compiled in 2011, four of the largest 500 companies in the country were headquartered in the district. In the 2021 Global Financial Centers Index, Washington was ranked as having the 14th most competitive financial center in the world, and 4th most competitive in the United States. Chapter 6, Culture Chapter 6, Section 1, Landmarks The National Mall is a large, open park in downtown Washington between the Lincoln Memorial and the United States Capitol. Given its prominence, the mall is often the location of political protests, concerts, festivals, and presidential inaugurations. The Washington Monument and the Jefferson Pier are near the center of the mall, south of the White House. Also on the mall are the National World War II Memorial at the east end of the Lincoln Memorial Reflecting Pool, the Korean War Veterans Memorial, and the Vietnam Veterans Memorial. The mall is home to an annual July 4th celebration, which often contains musical performances and fireworks. Directly south of the mall, the tidal basin features rows of Japanese cherry trees, which bloom in the spring. This part of the city is flooded by locals and tourists during the early months of the spring season when the tree's flowers are in full bloom. This is known as the National Cherry Blossom Festival. The Franklin Delano Roosevelt Memorial, George Mason Memorial, Jefferson Memorial, Martin Luther King Jr. Memorial, and the District of Columbia War Memorial are around the tidal basin. Many federal government and historic buildings outside the National Mall are also important landmarks that are common tourist destinations. The U.S. Department of the Treasury, located immediately next to the White House, is located in a historic building that is featured on the back of the United States $10 bill. The Octagon House, which was the building that President James Madison and his administration moved into following the burning of the White House during the War of 1812, is now a historic museum and popular tourist destination. Located on the northern side of the White House, Lafayette Square is a historic public square. Named after the Marquis de Lafayette, a Frenchman who served as a commander during the American Revolutionary War, the square has been the site of many protests over the decades. Meanwhile, the houses bordering the square have housed many notable figures, such as First Lady Dolly Madison and Abraham Lincoln's Secretary of State William H. Seward, who was stabbed by an intruder in his Lafayette Square house on the evening of President Lincoln's assassination. The United States National Arboretum, is a dense arboretum filled with gardens and trails located in the northeast quadrant of the city. It is operated by the United States Department of Agriculture's Agricultural Research Service. It is 446 acres in size and is located 2.2 miles northeast of the Capitol Building, with entrances on New York Avenue, Nebraska, and R Street, Nebraska. The campus's gardens, collections, and features are connected by roadways that are 9.5 miles long in total. In addition to the main campus in Washington, D.C., there are research locations at the Henry A. Wallace Beltsville Agricultural Research Center in Beltsville, Maryland and in McMinnville, Tennessee. A notable landmark of the Arboretum are the National Capitol Columns. These columns were part of the U.S. Capitol Building between 1828 to 1958, at which time they were removed, during the building's expansion. Another dense forested area in the city is Rock Creek Park, which is a large urban park in northwest D.C. It is administered by the National Park Service and includes many trails used for running, walking, horse riding, and other outdoor activities. A smaller urban park located in the city's limits is Theodore Roosevelt Island. This is an island in the Potomac River named in honor of President Theodore Roosevelt. The island has many trails used by bikers, walkers, and runners. The National Archives houses thousands of documents important to American history, including the Declaration of Independence, the Constitution, and the Bill of Rights. Located in three buildings on Capitol Hill, the Library of Congress is the largest library complex in the world with a collection of more than 147 million books, manuscripts, and other materials. 
The United States Supreme Court building was completed in 1935, before then, the court held sessions in the old Senate chamber of the capital. Chinatown is located just north of the National Mall. It houses many Chinese-inspired restaurants and shops as well as Capital One Arena, which serves as the primary indoor sports arena in Washington. The Friendship Archway is one of the largest Chinese ceremonial archways outside of China. The archway bears the Chinese characters for Chinatown on the panel just below the centermost roof. Additionally, the southwest quadrant of the city along the Potomac River has been redeveloped in recent years and now serves as a popular cultural center. The wharf, as it is called, is a multi-billion dollar mixed-use development on the southwest waterfront of the district. It contains the city's historic Main Avenue fish market, hotels, residential buildings, restaurants, shops, parks, piers, docks and marinas, and live music venues. The first phase of the wharf opened in October 2017, and the second and final phase is currently under construction. When construction is complete, the neighborhood will encompass 24 acres of land, 50 acres of water, and contain 3.2 million square feet of retail, residential, and entertainment space along one mile of the Potomac River shoreline from the Francis Case Memorial Bridge to Fort McNair. Chapter 6, Section 2, Museums The Smithsonian Institution, is an educational foundation chartered by Congress in 1846 that maintains most of the nation's official museums and galleries in Washington, D.C. The U.S. government partially funds the Smithsonian, and its collections are open to the public free of charge. The Smithsonian's locations had a combined total of 30 million visits in 2013. The most visited museum, is the National Museum of Natural History on the National Mall. Other Smithsonian Institution museums and galleries on the Mall are, the National Air and Space Museum, the National Museum of African Art, the National Museum of American History, the National Museum of the American Indian, the Sackler and Freer Galleries, which both focus on Asian art and culture, the Hirschhorn Museum and Sculpture Garden, the Arts and Industries Building, the S. Dillon Ripley Center, and the Smithsonian Institution Building, which serves as the institution's headquarters. The Smithsonian American Art Museum, and the National Portrait Gallery are housed in the old Patent Office Building, near Washington's Chinatown. The Rennick Gallery, is officially part of the Smithsonian American Art Museum, but is in a separate building near the White House. Other Smithsonian museums and galleries include, the Anacostia Community Museum in Southeast Washington, the National Postal Museum near Union Station, and the National Zoo in Woodley Park. The National Gallery of Art is on the National Mall near the Capitol and features American and European artworks. It holds in permanent collection the only Leonardo da Vinci work that is on permanent display in the Western Hemisphere, Ginevra de Bensi. The U.S. government owns the gallery and its collections. However, they are not a part of the Smithsonian Institution. The National Building Museum, which occupies the former pension building near Judiciary Square, was chartered by Congress and hosts exhibits on architecture, urban planning, and design. There are many private art museums in the District of Columbia, which house major collections and exhibits open to the public, such as the National Museum of Women in the Arts and the Phillips Collection in DuPont Circle, the first museum of modern art in the United States. Other private museums in Washington include the Museum, the O Street Museum, the International Spy Museum, the National Geographic Society Museum, and the Museum of the Bible. The United States Holocaust Memorial Museum near the National Mall maintains exhibits, documentation, and artifacts related to the Holocaust. Chapter 6, Section 3, Cuisine Washington, D.C., is rich in both fine dining as well as casual eating, and is now considered by many to be one of the best cities for dining in the United States. The city benefits from a diverse food scene made up of restaurants with a wide variety of international cuisines. The city's Chinatown, for example, is filled with Chinese-style restaurants. The city also has many Middle Eastern, European, African, Asian, and Latin American cuisine options. 
Despite the cosmopolitan nature of the city, D.C. is known for being the birthplace of particular foods, such as half-smokes. Like hot dogs, half-smokes are typically made by placing a sausage inside a bun, but are usually smoked and contain intense flavor from herbs, onions, and chili sauce. Additionally, the city is known for the being the birthplace of the mumbo sauce, a type of condiment that is similar to barbecue sauce but often sweeter in flavor. Among the district's most significant signature restaurants is Ben's Chili Bowl, which has been located on U Street since its founding in 1958. The restaurant rose to prominence as a peaceful escape during the violent 1968 race riots in the city. The restaurant is famous for its chili dogs, half smokes, and milkshakes. The restaurant has been visited by numerous presidents and celebrities over the years. Washington, D.C. Fine dining options are extensive, with the Michelin Guide awarding numerous D.C. restaurants with prestigious Michelin stars in recent years. The city's growth as a fine dining location has garnered the attention of many celebrity chefs, who have opened restaurants in the city. Among these chefs are Jose Andres, Kwame Onwachi, and previously Michelle Richard. Chapter 6, Section 4, Arts Washington, D.C. is a national center for the arts and houses numerous leading concert halls and theaters. The John F. Kennedy Center for the Performing Arts is home to the National Symphony Orchestra, the Washington National Opera, and the Washington Ballet. The Kennedy Center honors are awarded each year to those in the performing arts who have contributed greatly to the cultural life of the United States. This ceremony is oft attended by the sitting American president as well as other dignitaries and celebrities. The historic Ford's Theater, site of the assassination of President Abraham Lincoln, continues to operate as a functioning performance space as well as a museum. The Marine Barracks near Capitol Hill houses the United States Marine Band, founded in 1798, it is the country's oldest professional musical organization. American March composer and Washington native John Philip Sousa led the Marine Band from 1880 until 1892. Founded in 1925, the United States Navy Band has its headquarters at the Washington Navy Yard and performs at official events and public concerts around the city. Washington has a strong local theater tradition. Founded in 1950, Arena Stage achieved national attention and spurred growth in the city's independent theater movement that now includes organizations such as the Shakespeare Theater Company, Woolly Mammoth Theater Company, and the Studio Theater. Arena Stage opened its newly renovated home in the city's emerging southwest waterfront area in 2010. The Gala Hispanic Theater, now housed in the historic Tivoli Theater in Columbia Heights, was founded in 1976 and is a national center for the Latino performing arts. The Folger Shakespeare Library is a research library and museum located in the Capitol Hill neighborhood. It houses the world's largest collection of Shakespeare related material and third largest collection of English books printed before 1641. The Folger Library also runs special events and cultural attractions, most notably the Folger Theatre which is known for being a leading interpreter of Shakespeare works, in addition to those from other authors. The U Street Corridor in Northwest D.C., known as Washington's Black Broadway, is home to institutions like the Howard Theater, Bohemian Caverns, and the Lincoln Theater, which hosted music legends such as Washington native Duke Ellington, John Coltrane, and Miles Davis. Washington has its own native music genre called go-go, a post-funk, percussion-driven flavor of rhythm and blues that was popularized in the late 1970s by DC band leader Chuck Brown. Gogo began in the African-American communities of DC during the mid-1960s. It is considered to be a sub-genre of funk and since the 1990s has been significantly influenced by hip-hop. The district is an important center for indie culture and music in the United States. The label Discord Records, formed by Ian McKay, frontman of Fugazi, was one of the most crucial independent labels in the genesis of 1980s punk and eventually indie rock in the 1990s. Modern alternative and indie music venues like the Black Cat and the 930 Club bring popular acts to the U Street area. 
Chapter 6, Section 5, Sports. The following table shows the major league sports teams in the Washington area, sorted primarily by attendance in the most recent season for which data is available. Washington is one of 13 cities in the United States with teams from all four major professional men's sports and is home to one major professional women's team. The Washington Wizards and the Washington Capitals play at the Capital One Arena in Chinatown. The Washington Mystics play in the St. Elizabeth's East Entertainment and Sports Arena. Nationals Park, which opened in Southeast D.C. in 2008, is home to the Washington Nationals. D.C. United plays at Audi Field. The Washington Commanders play at FedEx Field in nearby Landover, Maryland. D.C. teams have won a combined 13 professional league championships, the Washington Commanders have won 5, D.C. United has won 4, and the Washington Wizards, Washington Capitals, Washington Mystics and Washington Nationals have each won a single championship, other professional and semi-professional teams in Washington include, D.C. Defenders, Old Glory D.C., the Washington Castles, the Washington D.C. Slayers, the Baltimore Washington Eagles, the D.C. Divas, and the Potomac Athletic Club RFC. The William H. G. Fitzgerald Tennis Center in Rock Creek Park hosts the City Open. Washington is also home to two major annual marathon races, the Marine Corps Marathon, which is held every autumn, and the Rock and Roll USA Marathon held in the spring. The Marine Corps Marathon began in 1976 and is sometimes called the People's Marathon, because it is the largest marathon that does not offer prize money to participants. The district's four NCAA Division I teams, American Eagles, George Washington Colonials, Georgetown Hoyers and Howard Bison and Lady Bison, have a broad following. The Georgetown Hoyers men's basketball team is the most notable and also plays at the Capital One Arena. From 2008 to 2012, the district hosted an annual college football bowl game at RFK Stadium, called the Military Bowl. The D.C. area is home to one regional sports television network, NBC Sports Regional Networks, based in Bethesda, Maryland. Chapter 7, Media Washington, D.C., is a prominent center for national and international media. Chapter 7 Section 1, Newspapers The Washington Post, founded in 1877, is the oldest and most read local daily newspaper in Washington. The Post, as it is popularly called, is well known as the newspaper that exposed the Watergate scandal. It had the sixth highest readership of all news dailies in the country in 2011. From 2003 to 2019, the Washington Post Company published a daily free commuter newspaper called The Express, which summarized events, sports and entertainment, it still publishes the Spanish-language paper El Tiempo Latino. Another popular local daily is The Washington Times, the city's second general interest broadsheet and also an influential paper in conservative political circles. The alternative weekly Washington City paper also has a substantial readership in the Washington area. Some community and specialty papers focus on neighborhood and cultural issues, including the weekly Washington Blade and Metro Weekly, which focus on LGBT issues, the Washington Informer and the Washington Afro-American, which highlight topics of interest to the black community, and neighborhood newspapers published by the current newspapers. Congressional Quarterly, The Hill, Politico and Roll Call newspapers focus exclusively on issues related to Congress and the federal government. Other publications based in Washington include the National Geographic magazine and political publications such as the Washington Examiner, The New Republic, and Washington Monthly. Chapter 7 Section 2 Television the Washington metropolitan area is the ninth-largest television media market in the nation, with 2 million homes, approximately 2% of the country's population. Several media companies and cable television channels have their headquarters in the area, including C-SPAN, Black Entertainment Television, Radio One, the National Geographic Channel, Smithsonian Networks, National Public Radio, Travel Channel, Discovery Communications, and the Public Broadcasting Service. 
The headquarters of Voice of America, the U.S. government's international news service, is near the capital in southwest Washington. Additionally, numerous national and international news sources have major offices and production centers in the city, from which they broadcast news shows, including CNN, the BBC, and France 24, among others. Many major daily or weekly news programs are broadcast from the city or its nearby suburbs. Studio shows filmed in the Washington area include the CBS Evening News, PBS NewsHour, Meet the Press, Face the Nation, Fox News Sunday, and Pardon the Interruption. Chapter 7 Section 3, Radio As of 2021, the Washington metropolitan area was the ninth largest radio market in the United States. NPR, XM Satellite Radio, and Voice of America, the U.S. government's international broadcasting service, are headquartered in Washington. Urban One, the largest and most significant African-American-owned media conglomerate in the country, is based in Washington and owns Wall, Wikis, WMMJ and Wyke. Washington has two local NPR affiliates, WAMU and Weta. Based at American University, WAMU is the largest publicly supported station in the market, and the primary NPR member station for Washington. WTOP-FM is the largest all-news radio station in the U.S., owned by Hubbard Broadcasting and Simulcast on a network of suburban FM signals. Hubbard also owns WUFT, which features government talk and had origins as an internet-only station. C-SPAN additionally operates WCSB-FM, directly simulcasting the audio from their public access cable channels. WJFK-FM, known as 106.7 The Fan, is the major sports radio station of the Washington area. It includes the Sports Junkies Show, an all-encompassing morning drive sports radio show that has been on the air since 1996. Chapter 7 Section 4, Internet Media Washington has over 60 online news outlets, in addition to websites run by the major print and broadcast media outlets. Washington ranks first out of the nation's largest, designated market areas in household possession of a computer and internet access. For news consumption, the city's major mainstream print and broadcast outlets command the most page views online, as well, WashingtonPost.com leads the pack with 10.6 million readers, an audience that extends beyond the metro region to include visitors from across the country. These mainstream outlets use their websites for various purposes. WashingtonPost.com, for example, features 107 blogs, including a section of the site called All Opinions Are Local, which republishes selected content from area bloggers. Other types of partnerships include TV broadcaster WUSA's pairing with Metromix, an online entertainment guide that caters to a younger audience than those who tune into the station's news broadcasts. Chapter 8, Government and Politics Chapter 8 Section 1, Budgetary Issues The mayor and council set local taxes and a budget, which Congress must approve. The Government Accountability Office and other analysts have estimated that the city's high percentage of tax-exempt property and the congressional prohibition of commuter taxes create a structural deficit in the district's local budget of anywhere between $470 million and over $1 billion per year. Congress typically provides additional grants for federal programs such as Medicaid and the operation of the local justice system, however, Analysts claim that the payments do not fully resolve the imbalance that the city's local government, particularly during the mayoralty of Marion Barry, was criticized for mismanagement and waste. During his administration in 1989, the Washington Monthly magazine claimed that the district had the worst city government in America. In 1995, at the start of Barry's fourth term, Congress created the District of Columbia Financial Control Board to oversee all municipal spending. Mayor Anthony Williams won election in 1998, and oversaw a period of urban renewal and budget surpluses. The district regained control over its finances in 2001 and the oversight board's operations were suspended. The district has a federally funded emergency planning and security fund to cover security related to visits by foreign leaders and diplomats.
presidential inaugurations, protests, and terrorism concerns. During the Trump administration, the fund has run with a deficit. Trump's January 2017 inauguration cost the city $27 million, of that, $7 million was never repaid to the fund. Trump's 2019 Independence Day event, a salute to America, cost six times more than Independence Day events in past years. Chapter 8 Section 2 Voting Rights Debate The district is not a state and therefore has no voting representation in Congress. D.C. residents elect a non-voting delegate to the House of Representatives, who may sit on committees, participate in debate, and introduce legislation, but cannot vote on the House floor. The district has no official representation in the United States Senate. Neither chamber seats the district's elected shadow representative or senators. Unlike residents of U.S. territories such as Puerto Rico or Guam, which also have non-voting delegates, D.C. residents are subject to all federal taxes. In the financial year 2012, D.C. residents and businesses paid $20.7 billion in federal taxes, more than the taxes collected from 19 states and the highest federal taxes per capita. A 2005 poll found that 78% of Americans did not know residents of the District of Columbia have less representation in Congress than residents of the 50 states. Efforts to raise awareness about the issue have included campaigns by grassroots organizations and featuring the city's unofficial motto, Taxation Without Representation, on D.C. vehicle license plates. There is evidence of nationwide approval for D.C. voting rights, various polls indicate that 61-82% to of Americans believe D.C. should have voting representation in Congress. Two approaches to resolving these concerns have been suggested. Statehood? Retrocession to Maryland, as Arlington County in 1846 was retroceded to Virginia, proponents believe the rest of the district could be given back to Maryland. Opponents of D.C. voting rights propose that the Founding Fathers never intended for district residents to have a vote in Congress, since the Constitution makes clear that representation must come from the states. Those opposed to making D.C. a state claim such a move would destroy the notion of a separate national capital, and that statehood would unfairly grant Senate representation to a single city. Chapter 8 Section 3 – Sister Cities Washington, D.C., has 15 official sister city agreements. Each of the listed cities is a national capital except for Sunderland, which includes the town of Washington, the ancestral home of George Washington's family. Paris and Rome are each formally recognized as a partner city due to their special one-sister city policy. Listed in the order each agreement was first established, they are. Chapter 9, Education. District of Columbia Public Schools operates the city's 123 public schools. The number of students in DCPS steadily decreased for 39 years until 2009. In the 2010-11 school year, 46,191 students were enrolled in the public school system. DCPS has one of the highest cost, yet lowest performing school systems in the country, in terms of both infrastructure and student achievement. Mayor Adrian Fenty's administration made sweeping changes to the system by closing schools, replacing teachers, firing principals, and using private education firms to aid curriculum development. The District of Columbia Public Charter School Board monitors the 52 public charter schools in the city. Due to the perceived problems with the traditional public school system, enrollment in public charter schools had by 2007 steadily increased. As of 2010, D.C., charter schools had a total enrollment of about 32,000, a 9% increase from the prior year. The district is also home to 92 private schools, which enrolled approximately 18,000 students in 2008. The District of Columbia Public Library operates 25 neighborhood locations including the landmark Martin Luther King Jr. Memorial Library. Chapter 9 Section 1 – Higher Education Private universities include American University, the Catholic University of America, Gallaudet University, George Washington University, 
Georgetown University, Howard University, the Johns Hopkins University Paul H. Nitze School of Advanced International Studies, and Trinity Washington University. The Corcoran College of Art and Design, the oldest art school in the capital, was absorbed into the George Washington University in 2014, now serving as its College of Arts. The University of the District of Columbia is a public land grant university providing undergraduate and graduate education. D.C. residents may also be eligible for a grant of up to $10,000 per year to offset the cost of tuition at any public university in the country. The district is known for its medical research institutions such as Washington Hospital Center and the Children's National Medical Center, as well as the National Institutes of Health in Bethesda, Maryland. In addition, the city is home to three medical schools and associated teaching hospitals at George Washington, Georgetown, and Howard Universities. Chapter 9 Section 2 Supplementary and Specialized Education The Washington Japanese Language School, a supplementary school for Japanese children subsidized by the Japanese government, was first established in 1958, with classes held on the grounds of the Embassy of Japan in the United States. As of 2022 the school offices are in Maryland and classes are held at Stone Ridge School of the Sacred Heart in Bethesda, Maryland. The Duke Ellington School of the Arts is a public high school in the district located in northwest D.C. Named after jazz band leader and composer Duke Ellington, himself a Washingtonian, the school is a leading school of the arts, specializing in the performing arts, such as theater and music. It is currently operated as a joint partnership between D.C. Public Schools, the Kennedy Center, and George Washington University. Chapter 10, Infrastructure Chapter 10 Section 1, Transportation There are 1,500 miles of streets, parkways, and avenues in the district. Due to the freeway revolts of the 1960s, much of the proposed interstate highway system through the middle of Washington was never built. Interstate 95, the nation's major east coast highway, therefore bends around the district to form the eastern portion of the Capitol Beltway. A portion of the proposed highway funding was directed to the region's public transportation infrastructure instead. The interstate highways that continue into Washington, including I-66 and I-395, both terminate shortly after entering the city. According to a 2010 study, Washington area commuters spent 70 hours a year in traffic delays, which tied with Chicago for having the nation's worst road congestion. However, 37% of Washington area commuters take public transportation to work, the second highest rate in the country. An additional 12% of DC commuters walked to work, 6% carpooled, and 3% traveled by bicycle in 2010. A 2011 study by WalkScore found that Washington was the seventh most walkable city in the country with 80% of residents living in neighborhoods that are not car dependent. In 2013, the Washington Arlington Alexandria Metropolitan Statistical Area had the eighth lowest percentage of workers who commuted by private automobile, with 8% of area workers traveling via rail transit. An expected 32% increase in transit usage within the district by 2030 has spurred the construction of a new DC streetcar system to interconnect the city's neighborhoods. The district is part of the regional capital bike share program. Started in 2010, it is one of the largest bicycle sharing systems in the country with more than 4,351 bicycles and more than 395 stations, all provided by PBSC Urban Solutions. By 2012, the city's network of marked bicycle lanes covered 56 miles of streets. Chapter 10 Section 1 Subsection 2 Rapid Transit and Rail the Washington Metropolitan Area Transit Authority operates the Washington Metro, the city's rapid transit system, as well as Metrobus. Both systems serve the district and its suburbs. Metro opened on March 27, 1976, and, as of 2014, consists of 91 stations and 117 miles of track. With an average of about 1 million trips each weekday, Metro is the second busiest rapid transit system in the country. 
It operates mostly as a deep-level subway in more densely populated parts of the DC metropolitan area, while most of the suburban tracks are at surface level or elevated. The longest single-tier escalator in the Western Hemisphere, spanning 230 feet, is located at Metro's deep-level Wheaton Station. Union Station is the city's main train station and serves approximately 70,000 people each day. It is Amtrak's second busiest station with 4.6 million passengers annually and is the southern terminus for the Northeast Corridor and Acela Express routes. Maryland's Mark and Virginia's VRE commuter trains and the Metro Rail Red Line also provide service into Union Station. Following renovations in 2011, Union Station became Washington's primary intercity bus transit center. Chapter 10 Section 1 Subsection 3 Bus Metrobus serves more than 400,000 riders each weekday, and is the nation's fifth-largest bus system. There are 269 bus routes serving 11,129 stops, including 2,554 bus shelters. In 2016, Metrobus provided approximately 123.6 million trips. On a typical weekday in June 2017, it provided more than 390,000 trips. The city also operates its own DC circulator bus system, which connects commercial areas within central Washington. The DC circulator buses are similar to shuttle buses since they operate on a predictable fixed route and schedule, and run between the city's main attractions and some of the more popular neighborhoods for visitors. The service began in 2005, and passengers increased as the routes grew from 2 to 5. Ridership peaked in 2011, and has decreased since then. The top month was July 2011, with 546,000 riders, the busiest month in 2014 was also July, with 470,000 riders. The subsidy per rider is unusually high, in 2016, it averaged $3.32. Chapter 10 Section 1 Subsection 4 Air Three major airports serve the district, though none are within the city's borders. Two of these major airports are located in suburban Virginia and one in suburban Maryland. The closest is Ronald Reagan Washington National Airport, which is located in Virginia just across the Potomac River about five miles from the city. This airport is primarily reserved for domestic flights and has the lowest number of passengers of any of the three airports in the region. The busiest by international flights and the largest by land size and amount of facilities is Washington Dulles International Airport, located in suburban Virginia about 24 miles away from the city center. Dulles has the most international passenger traffic of any airport in the Mid-Atlantic outside the New York metropolitan area, including approximately 90% of the international passenger traffic in the Washington-Baltimore region. The busiest by number of total passenger boardings is Baltimore-Washington International Airport, located in suburban Maryland about 30 miles from the city. Each of these three airports also serves as a hub for a major American airline, Reagan is a small hub for American Airlines, Dulles is a major hub for United Airlines and Star Alliance Partners, and BWI is a major focus city for Southwest Airlines. The President of the United States does not use these airports for travel. Instead, he rides Marine One from the White House lawn to Joint Base Andrews, located just beyond the city's limits in Maryland. There, he takes Air Force One to his destination. The air base was originally built in 1942. From 1942 to 2009, it was solely an Air Force base, but became a joint Air Force and Naval base in 2009, when Andrews Air Force Base and Naval Air Facility Washington were merged. Chapter 10 Section 2, Utilities The District of Columbia Water and Sewer Authority is an independent authority of the D.C. government that provides drinking water and wastewater collection in Washington. Wasser purchases water from the historic Washington Aqueduct, which is operated by the Army Corps of Engineers. The water, sourced from the Potomac River, is treated and stored in the city's Dolacalia, Georgetown, and Macmillan Reservoirs. 
The aqueduct provides drinking water for a total of 1.1 million people in the district in Virginia, including Arlington, Falls Church, and a portion of Fairfax County. The authority also provides sewage treatment services for an additional 1.6 million people in four surrounding Maryland and Virginia counties. Pepco is the city's electric utility and services 793,000 customers in the district and suburban Maryland. An 1889 law prohibits overhead wires within much of the historic city of Washington. As a result, all power lines and telecommunication cables are located underground in downtown Washington, and traffic signals are placed at the edge of the street. A plan announced in 2013 would bury an additional 60 miles of primary power lines throughout the district. Washington Gas is the city's natural gas utility and serves more than a million customers in the district and its suburbs. Incorporated by Congress in 1848, the company installed the city's first gas lights in the Capitol, the White House, and along Pennsylvania Avenue.